Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by PC Garage. Today, I'm gonna to answer all the questions I get about automatic engine stop-start systems. So if you have an automatic stop-start system in your car, you either like it or you hate it. I have the automatic stop-start system in my 2018 Chevy Malibu, and I have to say I'm not a big fan. I knew it when I bought it, was not a really big fan of it, and I'm, I'm still not a big fan of it. But the questions that I get all the time are pretty common. The first one is, does it wear out the starter because the engine is constantly stopping and starting? And because the engine is constantly stopping and starting, does it hurt the engine? Then the next question is, can you shut off this feature or bypass it? And finally, does it really add or increase fuel economy? First of all, it's important to understand that a stop-start system is not something new. It actually started in 1974 with the Toyota Crown. They put it on that vehicle and tried it, and through the years there have been many attempts by automotive manufacturers to increase the mileage, efficiency, economy, whatever, of a vehicle, including the 246 GM Pro uh, GM system where the when you're cruising, the fuel and the uh, spark and everything would be cut off to cylinders so you either run it on four six eight or whatever it was uh, There's different all all the different brands of automotive manufacturers have tried different things uh, To try and increase economy none of them really work So the one that really has caught on now is the automatic stop start that means when you get to a stop light or a stop sign uh, you're or if you just stop just come to a stop the engine will shut off and wait for you to take your foot off the brake and then the engine starts back up Almost every automotive, man I checked into this, almost every auto manufacturer now has a vehicle in their lineup with this feature on it. So let's start with the first question. Does it wear out the starter faster? Now logic dictates that since my car is stopping and starting more times, if I take a short trip it might be 10, 15, 20 times I'm starting an engine. So logic would bear that my starter should wear out 10 to 20 times more quickly it should wear out faster than it would if the engine wasn't stopping. Now engineers have taken this into account. We have to give them some credit. They knew that there was going to be an incredible amount of wear and tear on the starter. So the starters for these systems or cars with these with the automatic stop start system, the starters have been enhanced. They're heavy duty components. They're designed to be cycled more frequently. The gears are hardened, the ring gear on the transmission or wherever it's mating. All those parts have been enhanced to make sure that the starter and those starter components are gonna last with the repetitious of stopping and starting continuously without wearing out prematurely. I have heard that some vehicles are equipped with two separate starters, one to start the engine and one that acts as the starter for the stop start system. I haven't seen those yet and I've looked it up, I couldn't find any. Maybe if you know of a vehicle that has two starters for this, leave a comment below so we can all know, but so far I haven't been able to find one. Now the next question, does it hurt the engine? The most damage is caused to any engine upon startup, cold start. You leave it overnight, you leave it for a period of time, the coolant or the temperature gauge goes all the way down to cool, and when the engine's cool and you start it up, that is when the most friction and wear and tear occurs in an engine. So, these engines that have automatic stop-start systems in them have enhanced components inside to make sure they don't get wear worn out from the continuous cycle of stopping and starting. That includes the main bearings. The main bearings are coated with a, spe coated with a special polymer that performs much like a dry lubricant. So as the engine stops and starts, stops and starts, it's not going to prematurely wear out the bearings. Next is the battery. The battery has to be designed to handle the increased load, the charging withdrawal cycles, the charging, uncharging, discharge, whatever you want to call it, of constantly starting your car puts an extra load on the battery. So the batteries are designed to be uh, uh, enhanced. So there's an absorbent glass mat material or an enhanced flooded design of the battery that makes it more durable and stronger or capable of uh, of, uh, of uh, withstanding the cycles of stopping and starting and the additional load when it heats up from constantly stopping and starting the vehicle over and over. Now if your car has one of these systems in it, obviously if you're driving around and it's 120 degrees outside, it doesn't even have to be that, it can be 50 degrees outside, and your car is hot, you're driving and the engine is hot, if you come to a stop, if all of a sudden 
the coolant flow stopped and the coolant just sat there, the engine would start to heat up. The temperature would rise, rise very quick. Uh, and if you're sitting at a light for a minute or two minutes, the coolant that's sitting there can get really hot. And then when you start it, you got the coolant that's really hot rushing in the cold coolant, and there could be expansion contraction problems. So to handle that, uh, the water pump, uh, uh, some of the other components in the, in the vehicle that used to be mechanical, they are now electric they will have an electric water pump in there so that when you stop, even though you're stopped, the water pump continues to run to keep coolant running through the engine so you don't get a hot spot that all of a sudden flushes through the system or you don't run the chance of a components being ruined because they, because they overheat. Not only that, if you have a turbocharger that is water cooled or you have the cabin heat that's in your vehicle, if it's cold outside and you have the heat on, you don't want to have, you come to a stop, you don't want your turbo to be starved for coolant that could overheat and you don't want to sit at a light and all of a sudden the temperature starts, starts to drop in your passenger cabin because you're sitting there. So the computer in the car is equipped to handle extra sensors and the extra sensors in the car can tell when these other systems need to be activated, when the electric fuel pump needs to be activated, when certain things need to be activated so that the system is not starving, the engine doesn't get damaged, uh, nothing else is at, in jeopardy because all of a sudden the engine stopped, coolant's not flowing, oil's not being circulated, all the things that help keep the engine operating perfectly. So those were thought of as well. So the next question is, can these systems be shut off or bypassed? Now if you're lucky enough to purchase a vehicle that has a switch on a dashboard, the switch, like this one right here, the switch you can turn off your automatic stop-start system, which is a great feature. Uh, I don't have that in my 2018 Malibu. I haven't seen too many vehicles that have the ability to shut that off, but there are ways to do it. The easiest way to do that that I found in most vehicles is by using the shift lever itself. When you put your car, when your car is in park, when you're ready to go, you take your shift lever, instead of putting it in drive, you go down into low, or you might have a manual, but it's gonna be low. When you do that, it automatically puts the car down into manual mode or uh, low and you see on your dashboard the number one will be on the dashboard for first gear. Then you look at the button on the top of your shift lever and there'll be positive and negative. If you press the positive enough times it'll take the one and go up to number six or seven depending how many speeds are on your transmission and if you push that up button enough you'll get to the highest uh, gear and when you drive the vehicle thinks that you're in manual for some reason and it disables the stop start system. I do that all the time. As a matter of fact, it's become, I do it so much it's become second nature. I get in the vehicle, I automatically pull it down, I push that button, and then for however long I'm driving, a half hour, hour, I don't have to worry about my stop start system being active. Now, if you don't want to go through that ritual every time you get in the car, there are other ways to do it. And they're different for every car. On a 2018 Malibu, for example, and I think it's probably true for probably 2016, 15, 16, 17, 18, somewhere in that neighborhood up to current, uh, if you pop the hood open, there is a connector there that is the switch for the hood open. So if you pop your hood, you get the, your hood is open, light come up on your switch. If you simply pull back that connector and disconnect it, and shut the hood. When you go to start it, you'll notice, even if you have the hood open, you leave the hood open, you go to start the car, it doesn't say your hood's open. If you leave that connector disconnected, the computer thinks that the hood is open and electrically it disconnects the stop start system. I do have to give you this one warning. Anytime you disconnect a sensor, or any electrical component that is hooked in to the ECU, electronic control unit, which is the engine management system. Anytime you break any of those connections or disrupt one of those connectors, the engine or the computer is going to think there's something wrong with the engine. The engine light will come on and you'll have an error code for that associated a component. For example, when I disconnect the hood open switch, I get a code that says the hood open switch circuit is not performing correctly. The check engine light comes on and you get the code. Now it's not going to hurt the engine. However, you will have that code and if you go to your car inspected, since there's a check engine light on and there's a code associated with engine performance and emissions, 
it will fail inspection. That's a little more evasive. You may not want to go that far, or you may not be able to find the connector for the switch that goes to your hood release. And it may not even be connected to your electrical system so that the computer says, well, the hood's open, I'm gonna disable the stop start system. But on a 2018 Malibu or Malibu's around those years, you disconnect that hood open switch it disconnects or disables the stop start system. The next question is, does it really help? Does it add to the economy or fuel mileage, whatever? The answer is yes. And instead of going through all the math and equations and testing I had to look at to figure this out, uh, you have to, these are the basic components. Basically, how much fuel does your engine use when you start it up, above and beyond when it's running at idle? Then, how much does the in how much fuel does the engine use as it's sitting idling? And if you do some simple math, you look at it over a period of time, how much fuel does it use when it starts? And how much does it use when it's idling? And how much can I increase my economy or miles per gallon uh, to ensure that I'm getting some benefit from it? And, I, and what if this is what it all boils down to? I'm not gonna go through the math, but I'll tell you this. Here's a simple number to remember, 748 or 7, 4 to 8. Now, some manufacturers think or say that these stop-start systems can improve economy up to 10%, some of them say up to 12%, but this is what I found. This is why 7, 4, 8 is important. If you look at how much fuel it takes to start a vehicle and how much it uses while it's idling, if your car, if you're gonna come up to a light or whatever, and you're gonna stop, and it's gonna sit for more than seven seconds. That's the seven in the 748. If it's gonna be more than seven seconds, it's worth it to let your engine stop. Because after seven seconds, the engine will be using more fuel idling than it would be if it was just shut off and started back up. So if you're longer than seven seconds, the 48 is, you can expect four to 8% increase and your fuel economy or miles per tank of gas because you're using the stop start system. 748. If you're idling over seven seconds, or if you're gonna be I'm sorry, if you're gonna be stopped longer than seven seconds, let the stop start system shut off the engine. You should expect to see a four to eight percent increase in your miles per fill-up. That means that if you're going down a road or you're in a parking lot that has a bunch of stop signs in a row, or you're going down a street and you can see that there's 10 stop signs, you don't want to stop 10 times for one second because you're going to be burning more fuel than if you just had the engine idling at those stop signs. It's kind of a pain. You get, you're looking down the road, do I want to, to bypass the system or shut it off for these five stop signs, six stop signs, or do I want to let the engine shut off and then you're gonna be using more fuel? So this is the interesting question in my mind. These systems were designed to increase fuel economy and reduce emissions. But there are uh, many scenarios, probably most scenarios, where you are driving down the road and you're stopped for less than seven seconds, the car uses, ends up using more gas than it would if the engine was running, and that leads to more emissions. That would have to be a huge study, but I really don't know. But I can imagine that, let's say if most, the average trip is less than uh, 15 miles, most people drive about 13,000 miles a year, 13,500. And if you take the, the amount of stops or the amount of trips you make, put that into there, I can imagine, just estimate, 40, 30 to 40% of your driving is done making those short stops that are less than seven seconds. So you have a bunch of people that are actually losing fuel mileage and contributing to the emissions problem while the other people are getting some benefit because they're sitting at lights like city driving where the average traffic signal is 30 seconds if you get there and you stop you, there's a yellow light you're coming to a red light you stop and you're going to be sitting there for 30 seconds you're benefiting from it if you're coming up to that light while it's red and you stop your engine shuts off and it turns green three seconds later you're losing mileage so whether or not these things are advantageous or they really do benefit, only time will tell. Uh, I'm guessing as time goes on, we'll find out more about the benefits or the failures. There'll be more and more, uh, maybe there's be more manufacturers recalls or more warranty work that needs to be done because of the starters wearing out, components wearing out. Companies are gonna get sick of paying for it, so they're gonna discontinue putting it on vehicles. So only time will tell. And if you're watching this video and you, you hear that snoring, 
That, that's Frank, my security guard. He's sitting right there snoring. He snores. Just like my other dog, Shelby. They both sit there and snore. I make vi I'm putting the dogs to sleep. What can I say? I'm sorry, Frank. Oh, see, he just woke up. You say Frank, he thinks you're saying food. <laughs> so, anyway, stop start systems. Uh, the problems, will it wear out your starter? No, they're designed for it. Does it hurt your engine? No, the engine is designed for it. The systems are designed for it. Um, can you bypass it? Yes, you can. If, depending on your vehicle, there are different methods. And does it benefit? I think I'm up in the air on that one until some more data comes in and we can really tell if they've benefited long run. But the companies like to tell us and they like to tell the government that it benefits and as long as the government can mandate stuff and force stuff down our throat, they're going to do it. That's all I got to say. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.